Hello, I'd like to show you to do bas relief. So I'll just go through what bas relief is. So I've got a few examples here. So bas relief is where um, you use sugar paste and instead of cutouts, cutouts would be flat, it's slightly raised. So it's got a little bit of a 3D look to it. And uh, you can see in the picture there, so it's raised up. I'll just show you from the side so you can see the effect it gives. So it's very similar to modelling. It's a lot easier than modelling. Um, but modelling is definitely 3D. It's an all the way around thing. Well, this is just a section of it. So you imagine um, I've got a teddy bear here and I've just taken a slice of the teddy bear, the top part of the teddy bear. So I've got some other examples I'm using the same template. They're different colours different things for the bear to hold to give you an idea of what you can do okay so first of all I start off with my template so I've taken a birthday card and I've just photocopied it so I've put it in between the plastic wallet so the wallet will help me as I'm working my equipment I've got different coloured sugar paste I've got some modelling tools, a ball tool I find useful, a Dresden tool, which is pointed at the ends, a paintbrush, and a sharp knife. So all of those, including water and food colours, should, um, should be all the equipment I need. So where can you put the bas relief? It can go onto cakes, it can go onto plaques and then put onto cakes. So it's quite versatile, but very easy to do and it gets you a very good finish to the work. Okay. The other thing I've, I've just brought over is a cake. So I'm going to put my bas relief straight on the cake. Uh, I would attach it with water. So first of all, uh, I choose my paste and I'm going to do a gray. So a gray sugar paste that I've pre-colored. And I've first of all got to decide what, what I'm going to do first. Now when I do this, you need to do the things that are in the background first. So for example, on the, the picture, just bring it up so you can see, what's in the background? I would say this arm that's at the back, that would be my first job. This leg is behind this leg, so I'll do this leg first and then before I do the next leg. These legs are behind the body, so these legs need to be done before the body. Finally the head and his nose, and then last of all, his arm that's on top. Okay, so whatever picture you're following, if you try and remember, do the things that's in the background first. And when you do this work, you always take, you will start with a piece of paste and then reduce it because it's always smaller than you think. So I'm going to shape the paste. I'm going to place it on and I'm going to follow the template. So I'm going to mould it round. I'm trying to do it so you can see. Mould it round. And I don't want the shape to go outside the shape of my template. So I'm doing the back arm first. I don't want it raised up too far because it's in the background. So I can keep pushing it in if it's overlapping. And eventually, I can just trim it off. So there, I have the arm, the back arm. I can just take that off, place it to one side, and I can put all the pieces on the cake together. So my next section is the back leg. So from here, you can see this part of the foot is prominent, is sticking out. So I need to make that more prominent. So I'm starting with the ball of paste, and I'm just going to flatten some of it so this is obviously the the foot and this is the leg so again I'm going to work it so that it's raised up a little bit but the best thing about this is because you're working in sections you can take it off and if you think you've got too much paste you can start again so I'm going to flatten the part which is the leg which is furthest away and I'm going to bring the foot 
bit more closer to me. Making sure it's all nice and smooth. But flatten it down so it looks like it carries on around the back. So you can see from the way I'm flattening it down, it's going towards the outside of the template. And once I've done that, I can put this part on. So that's going to go under, so it looks like it's going under the, the teddy bear. That's his leg. I'm now going to do the second leg. And you can see by putting it in the plastic wallet, it just helps, it doesn't stick to the plastic wallet. And also I don't need to use icing sugar. If I need icing sugar, then it, it would spoil the sugar paste. So I'm, I'm keeping the foot part quite prominent, but flattening out the part of the leg. I think the tricky part of this is taking the amount of paste that you need. And you've got to, although I've got a flat picture here, you've got to imagine it's in a 3D form. So where it's going into the body, I've cut that off. And I'm going to use a lighter grey as a little pad for the bottom of his foot. So I'm going to roll paste to flatten it. And just place it on the bottom of his feet. To give the impression that he's lifting that foot up. Then taking that off. Placing it to one side. The body. So, as you can see from the picture, it's more rounded here, going down towards his head. And that's what I'm going to try and achieve. So, a rounded tummy. Going down under his arm. Working the pace, not over the line, just up to the line. And take that off. So that's his tummy. Next is his head. So each time I'm taking the paste, I'm making sure it's nice and smooth. Again, flatten it down, smoothen it out till it comes to the, the edge of his head. And what I'm going to do here is this part here needs to be raised up a little bit. So then I use the lighter grey for his snout, that can go on top. And what I can do is just slide him off to the side so I can see a better view of the picture. So it's a ball into an oval shape, place it on and again just flatten that down. You can do it on here and then transfer it. Now underneath the, that head goes his ears, so I'm going to do a ball of paste and I'm going to put a lighter ball inside. Now you, you can do that or you can just, just leave it plain, I'll leave it entirely up to you. I'll use a Dresden tool, sorry a, a ball tool, press it in. And then you can cut it into sections. So that can be one ear. That can be the other. So as you can see, I'm, I'm cutting it at a slope so that it gives the impression of going under the, the head. So I've got... Um, the only thing I need to do now is that the arm on top. I'll just move his head out of the way. It's quite funny when you, you see teddy bear all in sections. 
So I would always say, take the paste you might think you need, but then halve it. Because once you flatten it out and mould it to the shape you want, it's, you'll always find that you need less of it. So I've only got taken a small amount here. So I'm going to work the paste, flatten it out there, round it up where his hands are, making sure it's not over the line. If you're not pleased with it, roll it up and have another go. So it's not just a matter of being flat, you need it curved as well. Okay. So that's his final arm. Have I got everything? I think so. No complaints, it's on the cake. And I'm going to follow the pattern which I've got here to place it on. So first of all, I did that arm. Yeah, and I'm not sticking it down yet because I'm going to place it on and see if I've got it in the right position first. So that we've got one leg. I might, you might see better if we go a little bit closer. There you go. We've got one leg, we've got the other one coming in. We've got his body sitting on top of his legs. Like that. Tuck that arm underneath. There we go. Then got his ears. And got his head. His ears, I'm just lifting his head up so his ears go underneath. I'm going to do his head again, I think. I'm not too happy with his head. And this is the best thing about this. I'm not starting from scratch each time. I'm just doing a section. So I think my paste is a bit thin, so I'm going to put a bit more paste on there. on top of that. Then transfer that. Tuck in his ear underneath. And then finally his arm on top. So once I've got it all positioned properly, I can stick it down. So I'm using a little bit of water, not too much water, and just lifting it up. Placing the water underneath. Making sure I don't put the water where it's going to be visible. And then finally his arm. I've got the teddy bear where I want him. Okay, now what you can do is you can give him some texture. So I'm using a Dresden tool, I'm using the pointed, the, the smaller end. And I'm just going to do little strokes to represent the fur. And I can bring the, the paste out onto the cake as well. I can do them as hairy as I wish. There 
Vince Benton at the time. And you can see it's building up quite quickly. I'm not spending a great deal of time on that one here. I do think it's nice when you, you pull the paste a little bit onto the, the cake or onto the plaque. And find these ears. Okay, so I'll give them a little bit of texture. Now I can add the finer detail. Oh, let's have a look at the colours I've got. I've got pinky colours. Um, lilac nose. You probably find because that paste is soft, the the sugar paste will stick without the stick in the dairy water. So just put his nose on. I can give him some little patches of um, of the straight, same grey or lighter. So, and if I put it in between the plastic, I'll just move them across so you can see. If I put it between the plastic, I can flatten that down. I can use a rolling pin if I want to. I can even use my paintbrush just to roll it out a little way. Oh, forgot to move across the paper. There you go, hold on a second with me. So I just want it in between the plastic. You can see using the plastic just stops you from having to use any icing sugar. So I'm cut out a little square. Put this on his head. Give a little bit of interest. So, I'll just show you how to do the flowers. You could quite easily do a balloon instead. So again, I've got my Polly Pocket or a plastic bag, and I'm going to roll a ball. Um, and I need one ball for each petal. So it's better if you can do those before you shape them to get the same size. So I've got five. Roll it into a ball. Roll it into a teardrop. I've got the teardrop shape. Place it in the plastic and you flatten that down because you don't want it to stand up too much because as you know it's best really. I'm going to do that five times. So ball, two drop, flatten. And this is where you can get really creative. So you can, um, you can have him hold an umbrella, you can have him holding balloons, a flower. It's entirely up to you. A heart, yeah, that would look nice, especially for Valentine's or an engagement party. Okay, I'll bring it a bit closer to you so you can see. I've just placed on my flower, use a Dresden tool, uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some marks, just emboss some lines on to represent the, the petals. And again, once you're pleased with where it's going, a little bit of water will stop it from moving. 
It's always better to put it on before you actually stick it down. I've got a little bit of yellow sugar paste. A little bit of yellow into a ball and again flatten that down. Let's put that in the middle. What you might want to do is just emboss that with a little bit of texture in. Okay. Now on this one, to get the stem of raw de long sausage. This one, I've painted on the balloon strings, so it will be entirely up to you. For the stem, I'm going to take a piece of paste, sugar paste, and I'm going to roll it on a clean table when I roll it. The paste is a little bit dry, never mind. So, you just want to roll. A nice fine sausage. Look for where a, a section is thick because then you can roll it and get a nice even stem. I just want it to come from the flower. Into the teddy bear's hands. Put it that way around or that way. I think that one looks better. Of water and it is a very tiny amount of water and then I'm going to just place it in his hands, her hands. Place it down. Going to take a small amount of, of the green paste. Again, into a teardrop, but a little bit of a teardrop at the other end as well. So a rugby ball shape. Flatten that down. And again, thicker in the middle, thin around the edge to give that fast relief look. Check the size. Yeah. So don't be tempted to put the leaf standing up or curled up, it needs to be flat to represent the bas relief. Yeah, you can give it a little bit, I'm using the back of the knife just to emboss the, the veins on. Okay. What I can do now is I can paint some detail on. Plastic bag, give a picture. My Bailey's paintbrush, and I can add some detail. So, oops, first of all, I've got some food colour here, so just gel food colours. So, I've got green and I've got black. So, I'm going to use a little bit of green, mix it with the water, and perhaps just Just painting, so he looks like he's standing on a little bit of grass. Bit of black. Very steady hand. Now you can paint this on, or you can roll out balls of paste, or you can pipe it on. I'm just popping on his eyes. It's a nicely tucked in to the top of his nose. Oh, 
on paint eyebrows. I can do a little stitching. I'm going for a paler, well, like a grey colour for this. If anything does go disastrous, disastrously wrong, you haven't got to worry. Because what you can do with painting, you can dab at it if it gets a little bit wet. Or if I'm not happy with the eyes, I can take those eyes out and replace them with a little bit more paste and have another go. So I can do some stitching. And you can see what I'm doing, I'm, I'm resting my hand so that I don't shake so much. I'm going to paint as much detail on as I want to. A little trick. Oh, I think my eyes could look nice or smaller, so I'm just pushing the paste in. Just remembered, I've covered my cake today, so it's still soft. I'm just checking for any dents on the cake. Okay, so that's bust relief. It's slightly raised up from the cake, but it's it's not a modelling, and it's not cut out flat. It's um, bust relief, which stands out a little way from the cake. Okay, thank you.